welcome to this lecture series in real analysis finally in this lecture we will be able to talk about the exponential function fundamental function in mathematics so far we have been talking about polynomials and uh, quotient of a polynomial by another or maybe roots thirds but nothing out of the realm of algebra finally i mean we have discussed power series but they were abstract power series in this lecture we will finally be able to discuss the exponential function which is which is given by a power series but uh, it is a concrete function defined by a very simple property and we will see the definition wouldn't be via a power series that is not how we will define it anyway so let's uh, look at what we need to know as clear we need to know a bunch of things to follow this lecture one ingredient we'll need is the lagrange's mean value theorem I don't want to recall this statement because this is a very intuitive non-technical statement which you should know. Uh we need to know the ratio test which I have written down here. Again, I don't want to read it out. It is it is a technical statement, but uh, it's not very difficult to keep in mind. And then uh, we will need the uh, Taylor's theorem. Uh again, I don't want to read this out. You can pause the video and read it. And most importantly, we would also need to know that given a power series you can differentiate it term by term so if you have a power series it defines a function in its uh, interval of convergence or it in its disk of convergence and uh, the derivative of f is nothing but the power series that you get by differentiating the power series for f term by term right so this i'm i'm stating it semi precisely we discussed these things in the previous module previous two modules were de dedicated to power series and understanding them So anyway, uh I hope these things are clear to the reader or viewer and with that now let us proceed. So there is a simple question one can ask which will the answer to which will culminate into the exponential function. What is the question? First we will ask a silly question. The question is is there a function that is equal to its own derivative more precisely is there a differentiable function let's say defined on all of the real numbers which is equal to its own derivative meaning s prime is equal to s is there such a function it is a simple curiosity i mean it's not a very deep question as such uh, on the face of it but it is a natural curiosity and it is a silly question because it admits a very um anticlimactic answer just take f as the constant function 0 if f takes the value 0 everywhere clearly the derivative of f, f is also 0 everywhere and hence uh we have this so it was a silly question but we can now ask a much better question is there a differentiable function defined on all of the reals which is equal to its own derivative but satisfying this condition that f of 0 is 1 right so this time we cannot give the silly answer right so uh so yeah i mean this is what we are trying to answer all right so let's proceed so okay i mean before we will talk about the existence of such a function we will establish its uniqueness and the main lemma towards the uniqueness is what i am calling as a preparatory lemma so suppose we have a function again differentiable such that it is its own derivative if it takes the value 0 at 0 then it is identically 0 it takes the value 0 everywhere so this is a claim okay and i encourage you to pause the video and find your own proof of it there are multiple ways to prove it at least two ways to prove it um uh, i think i'll take some i'll i'll take i'll do it one way and uh, sketch another way as an exercise in the next lecture or so so we will show that f of 1 is 0 we want to show that f takes the value 0 everywhere let us just uh, just show that it, it takes the value 0 at 1 and the same proof will be able to show 
that f is identically zero. So let's just understand this and we will proceed by contradiction. So suppose not. And uh, either then the value at one is positive or negative without loss of generality, say it is positive. Okay, great. So let's say this is one and f takes some positive value at one. So here is the main idea. Write f of one as this ratio. Right? Because f zero is zero, the numerator is just f of one and the denominator is one, so this whole thing is f of one. By Lagrange, this is equal to f prime lambda one for some lambda one strictly between zero and one. Right, immediately by Lagrange theorem. But now the point is, by hypothesis on the function f, f prime lambda one is same as f of lambda one. Same as f of lambda one. All right, so whatever value f was taking at one, the same value it takes at lambda one. So let's maybe uh, depict that in the diagram. Okay, but we will play the same kind of trick here. We will write this as the following ratio. But this time we'll have to multiply this thing by lambda one so that the denominator cancels out and the numerator is equal to lambda one. Uh, sorry, f of lambda one. Again, apply Lagrange to, to this ratio. So this is equal to f of lambda two. Sorry, not f of lambda two, f prime of lambda two by Lagrange, where lambda two is strictly between lambda one and zero. But then again, what is f prime lambda two? By hypothesis, this is equal to f of lambda two. Sorry, this was a lambda one. I'm making so many mistakes. Right, so this is f prime lambda two, which is same as f of lambda two, and this lambda one carries on. Okay, so again, you keep continuing. This way, we will, by the same reasoning, we will be able to show this is equal to f of lambda three times lambda two times lambda one, where lambda three is strictly between lambda two and zero. Right, and we can go on, this will go on. Now this thing is less than one because lambda one, lambda two, each of them is less than one. And the lambda n's, they keep clo coming closer and closer to zero, right? At any rate, even if, I mean, this reasoning doesn't really show that the lambda n's converge to the origin, it is possible that they accumulate before the origin. I mean, that's possible, but Whatever is lambda one, lambda one is strictly smaller than one. And each of lambda two, lambda three, lambda four, dot, dot, dot are strictly less than lambda one and between and, and greater than one. So this product will become as small as you like, right? So this product will become as small as you like. So after let's say n steps, you can write this as maybe n plus one steps, you can write this, write this as. And this whole thing is less than equal to uh, lambda one to the power n, right? Because each of them is less than lambda one. And lambda one is some number between zero and one, so, so this can be made as small as you want, while this value is not more than whatever is the value of the function, whatever is the maximum value the function takes on this interval. So this has some uniform bound. F is after all a continuous function because it is a differentiable function in particular. So it is a continuous function and uh, hence it has some bounded value that it takes on this entire interval. So this value is, is bounded. This can be made as small as you want. So therefore F1 is as small as you want and hence it cannot be positive. So therefore f1 is zero and by the same argument you can show the function vanishes everywhere on this interval. We could have started with not not this value, uh, I mean not, not at one, but the same reasoning shows that f of t is zero 
for all t in this interval. Right, and then you can similarly upgrade it for, for this because it's kind of just a translation of the previous argument. You can now think of this as the origin. So you can show that the function vanishes everywhere. But I hope it shows the intuition. That that is more important. The formal details are not so not so important. The main idea is just use Lagrange and bootstrap the argument. And then you can fill the details on your own. Okay, great. So this shows that if such a function exists, it is unique. By such a function, we mean what kind of function? So it shows that if uh, you know, if f is a function uh, which is equal to its own derivative and f0 is equal to 1, then there is at most one such f. There cannot be two different. So to do that, suppose there are two different or suppose there are two such functions, f and g are two functions, such that f prime is f, g prime is g, f0 is 1, and g0 is 1. Okay, now uh, consider or define a function h as h is equal to f minus g, and then h prime is its own derivative, clearly, easy to check, and h of 0 is 0. Easy to check, and now by the previous lemma, this implies that h is identically 0, which implies the function f is equal to the function g. It's a very simple piece of reasoning, so I don't want to uh, blabber on about it. So the conclusion is that if there is such a function, the function of our dreams, then there is at most one such function. All right, finally, now we will see if such a function actually exists. So can we take a guess? I mean, we'll have to construct such a function. I don't know how else to do it. I mean, there may be an existence proof which doesn't require us to construct it or something. But uh, we can write the function down explicitly in some sense. And if we apply Taylor's theorem about the origin, we will already see what the function should look like. So by Taylor's theorem, if suppose, yeah, so let f be a differentiable function, be a differentiable function, such that it is its own derivative and f0 is 1. Okay, uh, so by Taylor expansion, Taylor expansion about the origin, we have what should it satisfy? If such a function exists, it, it has to satisfy this, this thing that this is equal to f of 0 plus f prime 0 times x plus f double, time, double prime 0 by 2 factorial times x squared plus so on and so on plus some remainder term which is which is this right so that's Taylor's theorem and uh, since f0 is 1 and f prime is equal to f, we see that all of these numbers are actually equal to 1. So f prime equals to f and f0 is equal to 1. This implies all of these numbers are 1. Therefore, fx is these first 10 terms can be succinctly written as follows. And then there is this remainder term. Right? So this leads us to a natural guess for the Taylor expansion. I mean, sorry, 
for the function f, if there is such a function, it should satisfy, it should be defined by this power series. Right, so this is our guess, that this power series defines a function which is equal to its own derivative and f of zero is one. Clearly, I mean, if this converges and whatever, suppose for the moment this convergence issues don't arise, clearly f of zero is one. And if you term by term differentiate it, you will see that actually this thing is equal to its own derivative. So now the main point is to see where all this thing converges and that will be it. Okay. So our claim is that this power series converges everywhere. And the proof is very simple. Just use the ratio test. So fix some x, some real number x. Then we have this power series. Uh, then we have this power series where think of it just as a usual series. The x is just some real number, so this call this a n. Let me be more fancy. Call this a n, and then to use the ratio test, we just need to see what what about this guy. So what is this ratio? This ratio is uh, is this, which is by cancellation equal to x upon n, n plus one. Right, which converges to zero as n goes to infinity. So by ratio test, by ratio test, this series converges and hence this power series converges for all x and hence its radius of convergence is uh, infinite. And therefore this is a legitimate function on the entirety of the real numbers. And we have already commented that if you take the derivative of it, you'll get the same thing back. Okay, so that's it. So the function that we were, that we were dreaming of actually exists and we have already shown that it is unique. And this is called the exponential function. This is called the exponential function. This expression is denoted by this expression. You can either denote it as e to the x or you can denote as x of x. Both are just notations for this expression. And therefore, the function is really exp. This is the function from reals to reals, which at x takes this value, right? But a lot many times uh, we denote it like this. Okay, uh, yeah, I think this is all for this lecture. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time.